we'll get started here in just a minute. Y'all hang tight. Okay, class, um, <clears throat> had uh, want to take a moment to talk about the exam. Um, I was, I guess, I don't know, uh, everything, the grades have been very consistent this semester. Um, I was looking at, you know, the students, these are the three exams, these are the averages highlighted in yellow. Those are the averages on the, the, on the three exams we've taken. 65.7, 65.7. This exam was actually a little bit better, about two points better. And our standard deviation, that's the second number here in green, that measures how far apart the grades are. So if, if, if there's a lot of A's and a lot of F's and nothing in between, then it's a big number. If, if it's um, a lot of A's and B's, but not many C's and D's, but they're clumped together, then it would be a small number. 20 is an act is actually a pretty pretty big number and normally I see around 15 or 16 for standard devi deviation. So what this tells me is that we have a spread of grades. We have students that are doing okay. It looks like the same three students have gotten A's. Well, maybe not the same three, but we've had three students get A's on, on all tests. And not many B's, not many C's, lots of D's, lots of F's. So consistency, I guess, is the is the the pattern here. And I don't know. I mean, I I want all of y'all to succeed. I want you all to do well. But um, you know, I know maybe part of this is just that we're Zoom. I don't know. But um, this is, I think, it, you know, face to face, we'd probably be better. I don't know. But that's, that's where we are. You know, there's not much that we can do at this point. We're gonna finish out the semester. The drop date's already come and gone. So um, we'll have the final exam. Um, if you do well on the final exam, I'll consider replacing your lowest test score with your final exam grade. But um, you kind of know where you are at this point. You can go into Canvas, you can mess with your grades, see what you need. Um, you know, to, to get whatever grade in the class. So does anyone have any questions on that or on the exam itself? There was one problem on the test that, uh, hold on, let me pause this. There was one problem on the test that I made a typo on. So I didn't grade it. Um, let me, let me show you which one it is. Okay, let me resume my share. So my typo was on, where is it? This problem, number 6A, I accidentally put 
down here, different bases on the log. And I don't know why, I just had a mental uh, brain fart. And so it really wasn't like a solvable thing. And so nobody brought it up during the test. So, and some people did mention like, hey, what the hell is going on here? Like, what is this? So I did not grade it. And I, when I say I didn't grade it, I gave everyone credit for it, no matter what. Okay, so yeah, anything, anything else or anything that you wanna discuss? Any questions? Okay, so what are, what are we planning on doing here? Uh, we only have three class meetings left today and the next week, that's it. So today, what I plan on doing is talking about systems of linear equations. And that'll probably flow over into next week a little bit. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about sequences. I wanna just get you familiar with some notation and maybe a, a couple of different types of sequences that'll come up. Sequences, you don't actually see sequences again until Cal 2. That's when you'll study sequences. So there's a long gap between when we look at sequences for the first time and when you actually study them again. So, but we wanna at least familiarize you a little bit with them. So the plan right now is systems of equations, all right? Now, historically, students do pretty okay with this, right? Historically, that's what I've seen is like, this, this goes okay. So let's get down to business, uh, systems of equations, more systems of equations next time. Then we'll start sequences and start oops, sequences next time. Okay, so, I, here's, here's what we're going to do. I just want to do like a little thought exercise. If I give you this equation, x plus y equals 10, this is called a linear equation. In two variables. We've studied these before. If you were to solve this thing for y, right? If you were to get y by itself, move the x to the right side, you would get that. And then you could graph this, couldn't you? You could graph this line. And to graph it, it would actually be pretty straightforward because graphing lines, all you have to do is identify the y-intercept, which is 10 and then use the slope. This would be a negative one in front, that would be your slope. That means to get to another point, you go down one over one. So if I go down one over one, draw a line through here, that gives me the graph of that linear, that linear equation. Okay, that all look familiar? Seen that before, all right? So can somebody tell me a value of x, I just want someone to volunteer to give me a value of x and a value of y that would make this equation true. Any x, any y you want. Anybody feel like playing today? Five. Five for both? Yeah. Okay, five for X, five for Y. That would work, right? Five plus five is 10. Okay, is that the only set of numbers that would work? Is there another X and another Y that would work? Sure, right? You could you come up with something else, right? Seven and three, right? Seven and three would work. Now, I could keep going all day. I could go for the rest of my life picking points that would work. All of these points have something in common, and that is they, they lie on this line. So if I were to go and take this point five, five, and look at it as a point on the graph, five, five, five would be to the right five, up five, and that would be right there on the line. If I got the point seven, three, I go to the right seven, I go up three, 
and that would be right here. Uh, we could have used, how about this? How about 10, zero? That would have worked, right? 10 for x, zero for y, that would make that equation true. And that point would lie right here on the x-axis. So when you draw a line, the line actually represents all of the actual solutions to that linear equation with two variables in it, okay? So this should be a, a recap. We've, we've talked about this before in the past. That's not exactly what today is about. What today is about is this. How about I give you this equation, x plus y equals 10. That's a linear equation in two variables. That's the one we were just looking at. And I'm gonna give you a second equation. Those are not the same equations, right? Those are two different equations. They're both linear equations in two variables though, right? Like you could solve both of those for y and you could graph these, these would be lines. So my question to you is, can you find me an X and a Y that work in both equations at the same time? So can you think of an X that I can plug in and a Y that I can plug into both equations and it will work in both equations? So like, think about this. We know that five, five works here, right? Five, five works there. But does five, five work here? Well, five minus five is not 10, right? So this would not work. So can you find me an X and a Y that work for both? Can anyone do it just by looking? Can anyone figure it out? Is it 10, zero? 10, zero, yeah. 10, zero will work. Look, if I try 10, zero here, 10 plus zero is 10, that works. And then over here, 10 plus or 10 minus zero is also 10. Do you think that there are any other answers that work? What do y'all think? Do you think there's others? Or do you think that's the only one? What do you think? Think about what this is. Think about what this is geometrically. I can graph that, right? Let's, let's do a graph. If I graph this, we just did that a second ago, I go up to 10 and I would draw that like this, right? That's what that would look like. That's, that's this one. If I draw this one, it's gonna be a, a different line. Agreed? It's gonna be something different. So let me draw a different line. I don't know where it's gonna be, but let's just say it does this, right? That's this line. What does this 10, zero represent? It's a solution to both, right? Which means it must live on both lines, which means it's which point? Geometrically. Isn't it the one where both lines intersect each other? Exactly, it's this point right here. Okay, well, in my picture is not drawn correctly, but that intersection, right? The intersection of those two lines is, is a point that works on both lines, right? The point lives on both lines and therefore it must be a solution to both equations. So go back to what my question was, 10 zero works, right? Is that the only answer? Well, if I draw two lines, they should only intersect at one point. If they do, right, intersect, they should only intersect at one point, which means I should only have one solution, one point that works for both. So that's what today is about. If I give you a system of equations, that means if I give you two lines, can you find the point that they intersect, All right? That's what, that's what solving a system of equations is about. So let me, let me start new here. A system of linear equations is a set of equations.
which we try to determine a solution of. So I'm gonna give you a set of equations and I'm gonna ask you to find the solution to that system of equations, which means you're gonna try and find an answer that works in, in all the equations. Now, in this class, we will only look at systems of two equations with two variables. or three equations with three variables. Today, at least to start, we're just gonna talk about two equations, two variables. So today is really about this scenario. And then we'll talk, if we have time at the end of class, we'll start getting into three, but I think we'll probably wind up next week talking about three. Okay, so let's do our first example. I want you to solve this system of equations. Now, I'm gonna write the two equations I want you to solve simultaneously. X plus Y equals 10 and X minus Y equals 10. That's the problem that we already know the answer to, right? I think it was Malak, I think, told us that the answer was 10, zero, right? Was it Malak or Sana? I don't remember. Malak. Okay, Malak, thank you. So I want us to solve both of these at the same time. So what I'm gonna do to let you know that is I'm gonna put a big curly brace or what we call a curly bracket in front of those two equations. And that is signifying that this is a system of equations and we want to solve both of them at the same time. So we know the answer already, right? We know the answer, but let's act like we don't, okay? We know the answer is 10, zero, all right? We know that, but let's act like we didn't know that and go about the procedure for solving this system of equations. There are two methods available to us. Okay, to solve systems of equations. We have two methods. To solve systems. I'm just going to say systems. All right, systems of equations. The first method is called substitution. The second method is called elimination. Now, I am partial to the elimination method. And I think you will become partial to the elimination method as well, because the thing is substitution is, is nice when you have two equations and two unknowns or two variables. Like the system we're about to do, Substitution is nice. But if when we go to the case next time with three equations and three variables, then substitution doesn't work very well. In fact, we, we wanna do elimination instead. But elimination works on this as well, okay? So elimination is kind of like the more powerful method. It's a little tedious, but it's powerful. So I'm gonna show you substitution first. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this method first on this system up here. Okay, so if I'm doing substitution on the system above, here's what we're gonna do. Now, I could write down steps, okay? A procedure for this, 
I could, but when you write down the steps for substitution, it just looks confusing, all right? So I'm gonna just like verbally say it and then kind of on the side, when I'm doing my notes, I'll just kind of state what I'm doing. So when you're doing substitution, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at the equations and you're going to try and, and pick one of these equations. You get to choose. And you're gonna solve that equation for either X or Y. It's up to you. So for me, I'm going to pick the first equation and what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna solve it for Y. I picked, I could have solved for X, but I'm gonna solve for Y. So I take X plus Y equals 10. I solve it for Y, which means I move the X to the other side and I get Y is 10 minus X. Any questions there? I'm just moving things around on the first equation. Okay, that would be kind of like my first step, right? First, first step. The second step is to look at the other equation that I didn't pick, right? So now I'm gonna look at this equation here and I'm gonna take that and I'm going to replace the Y with this what I just said y was. So let me take that second equation, x minus y equals 10, but let me replace the y. So I'm gonna put x minus, but y we said was 10 minus x. So I, I need that in parentheses because there was a minus in front of that y. I need to distribute that, that minus through this parenthesis to both the 10 and the negative x, then equals 10. Okay, so all I did there, right, was replace that Y with this. Questions? Distribute the negative through. And now what you have is a linear equation, right? So this is my second step. And my last step would be to solve it, okay? so. Let's just group things together. 10x equals, or 2x equals, um, ay, ay, ay. 2x equals 20. So I just added the x's together and then I moved the 10. I added 10 to both sides. And then I divide both sides by 10, by two and I get 10. Isn't that what we said the x would be? We said it would be 10, right? Okay. That's my third step I solved, right? So I solved. And now this is where the, this is where the um, method substitution comes into play. We, we, we're gonna substitute this answer back into, it's be kind of like the last step, to get y, to find y we go back. Remember we had this equation for y right here that we solved earlier? I'm gonna take that y equals 10 minus X, and I'm gonna replace the X with what X is. We said X is 10, right? So this is 10 minus the 10 we just got down here. So Y equals zero. So my solution is this, 10, zero. So to recap the method for substitution, you have your system of equations. You pick one of the equations, you solve for one of the variables. Then you take the other equation and replace that variable that you solve for into the second equation, solve it, get an answer, and then substitute that answer back in to, the, to get the other variable. So you actually do two like substitutions you do like two substitutions in the problem. Questions? Why don't I give you one to try, okay? And all of that that we just did, which was solving for Y, replace Y, and then solve, that was all for substitution, right? That's all substitution, yep. Okay. So I'm gonna give you another one here. 2X minus 4Y equals eight. Uh, let's not do eight, let's do nine. And let's do um, x plus 
I make it 5x plus y equals 13. I'd like for you to do this with substitution. So remember, the first step is to pick one of the equations and pick one of the variables to solve for. There's kind of a hard way to do this problem and an easy way. And your numbers may not be nice, okay? Let's take five minutes, see how far you can get in five minutes with this. And just to help you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this and go back to the previous page. And I'm just gonna put, put this right here, the problem right here that I want you to do. But I'm gonna leave my work up here. That way you can kind of look at it if you need it as reference. Five minutes. If you're having any trouble, I'm going to give you a hint on the first step. I would solve the second equation for y. Hey, look.
Okay. I was working that silently. So why did I why did I pick the second equation to solve for y? Why do you think I did that? Why not pick the first equation to solve for y or this, or okay. solve for x? You could get the y by itself by just moving the five to the right. Yeah, just moving the five x to the right. It, it's easy to solve for y. If I try and solve for y in the first equation, I'm going to have to divide by negative four, and I'm going to create fractions right off the right from the start, which I want to try to avoid fractions if I can. So that's why I went for this one. Now, once I moved it over. I took that y and I substitute, substituted it into the first equation for, for the y here. Very important that it's in parentheses. Distribute through and solve for x. So how about that? 61 over 22. Is that all right? Any questions there? That's what x is. Now we need to find y. So how am I going to get y? Well, I'm just going to take this equation here that has y. 13 minus 5x, and I know what x is. x is 61 over 22. And so y equals 13 minus, now if I wanna keep this as fractions, it's gonna get ugly. I have to multiply these together. That's gonna be what, 305 over 22, I believe. All right? I just did five over one times that. And then I need to get a common denominator here. So I do 13 times 22, 286 over 22 minus 305 over 22. So y equals negative 19 over 22. So my answer, if I look at it as a point on the graph, it's 61 over 22 for x and negative 19 over 22 for y. I'm going to get those as, as decimals on my calculator just to have them. This is about 2.772. And this one is about 0 0.8636, something like that. Any questions? No, sure. I'm gonna take a minute, I wanna graph this. I want you to see this. I'm gonna type these in, 2x, minus 4y equals 9. And then I'm going to type in 5x plus y equals 13. We should have two lines in front of us. OK? And what we found is their intersection point, which is this point right there. And if I hover my mouse over it, it's going to tell me it's 2.773, negative 0.864, which is what we got. Okay. Questions? Let's do one more. Then we'll talk about elimination. 3x minus 4y equals 10. 5x plus 3y equals negative 12. All right. So the reason I'm doing this one is I want to give you an example of a problem where there is no clear indication of which equation you should solve and which variable you should solve for, because it's not easy to get y by itself or x by itself, because they all have coefficients in front of them. So really, there's no nice way. And I just want you to see how this gets pretty ugly pretty fast. 
So just I'm just going to pick the first equation, okay? And I'm going to choose to solve it for x. That's just my choice, okay? I'm going to solve this for x. So I picked that equation, and I'm going to solve for x, because that's what Robert wants to do today. 3x minus 4y equals 10. And so I move the 4y, negative 4y to the other side, it becomes 4y plus 10, or 10 plus 4y. It doesn't matter what order you write those. Unfortunately, though, I have to divide by 3. So watch what happens. It becomes x equals, I'm dividing everything by 3, 4 thirds y plus 10 thirds. Okay, that's my equation for x. That's my first step. I picked one, picked the first equation, I solved it for x. Now what I do is I go to the second equation, right? And I'm going to write it down. And now I'm gonna replace the x, right? The x is gonna be replaced with that. And that sucks, right? That's fractions, it's gonna be fraction disaster. But that's what I have to do. So I'm going to go 5. Then I'm going to go replace the x. 4 thirds y plus 10 thirds. Then plus 3y equals negative 12. Any questions up to that point? No? So here I replaced or substitute. And now I'm going to solve. Okay, so I'm gonna solve this now. Oh man, that sucks. I gotta distribute the five through. So it becomes 20 over three y plus 50 over three plus three y equals negative 12. Oh, how are you going to solve this? You got to solve this for y, right? You have a lot of options here. I'm going to try and do it without my calculator. And I'm also going to do something that, like me personally, this is what I would do because I don't like to work with the fractions. I'm going to clear the fractions out right now because this is just a linear equation. I have to solve it. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by three. And that should have the effect of killing off the fractions. Because if I distribute through here, it should kill off those threes. So I should get a 20y, because the threes cancel there, plus 50 plus 9y equals negative 36. That just makes it a little bit easier to put things together. I have 20, 29 y's equals negative 86. So I just put these y's together and then I subtracted 50 on both sides. And finally, I will divide by 29. Unfortunately, my final answer is, is a fraction, okay? There's no way around that. That's just, that's what it is. I'm gonna get this on my calculator as a decimal, just so I have it. This is approximately negative 2.97, something like that. All right, so I have solved for y. Now I need to go back and get x, right? So I'm gonna to go to my equation that had x in it, x equals 4 thirds y plus 10 thirds. I'm going to replace the y, this y right here, I'm going to replace it with negative 86 over 29. Ugh. And now I have to actually multiply those two together. So four times negative uh, 86, I get negative 344 over three times 29 is 87 plus 10 over three. Ugh. 
Those numbers suck. How about I just go right to a decimal now? You could get a common denominator here. You would multiply three on top, three on the bottom. You would multiply 87 here, 87 here. But I'm going to go around. I'm just going to get this as a decimal. While I'm doing this, does anyone have any questions? Y'all are being awfully quiet today. So my answer, remember you always put X first, negative 0.621, the Y value is negative 2.97. Let's check it. Let's check it. I'm going to graph it again. You might be wondering, like in the real world, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be easier just to use the computer to do this like this? Wouldn't it be nice if I, I just go 3x minus 4y equals 10? And then the other one, I just put 5x plus 3y equals negative 12. Once I graph them, <clears throat> excuse me, I hover my mouse over their intersection. <clears throat> Is that what we had? That's what we had, negative 0.621. And neg did we have negative 2.9? Hold on. We did, right? Were they both negative? Yeah, OK. There's some rounding issues. We, we may have rounded too much, but that looks pretty damn close. Negative 0.621. Negative 2.97. All right, so they went one more decimal place than I did. So right in the real world, wouldn't you just want to do this, right? Just go to the computer, type it, and have it solve it, right? So elimination, I mean, sorry, um, solving systems of equations, really two equations, two variables like this, is best done with, with technology, right? So I, I want to show you elimination. All right, and then after I show you elimination, we're gonna do some word problems. We're gonna see how you can do like, you know, how you can take a word problem and, and turn it into system of equations. All right, y'all ready for elimination? We're gonna do all three problems again with the other method. So now, oops, now elimination. And this is the one that I prefer, and you're probably going to feel the same way. All right. So the first equation I would like to do, or the first system I want to do is this one. So I'm going to put this problem back up again. All right. So here's, here's the, the rules when it comes to elimination. All right. I'm going to type them up in over here. The first rule of elimination when you're doing this method is you can multiply any equation by any non-zero number. Okay, so I'll put up here, these are the, these are the, uh, the rules. And when I say these are the rules, what I mean is this. The solution, whatever the solution is to this system, if I multiply one of the equations by a number, it doesn't change the answer. So we are always allowed to multiply either equation, any equation by any non-zero number. So if I, wanna, if I wanna take the first equation and multiply everything by two, I can do that and it's not gonna change the answer to the problem, all right? The next thing we can do and this is tricky, so I'm going to type it and then we'll talk about it. You can add any two equations together, then replace one of them with your answer. So that means that I am free at any point in time to take any two equations and add them. Whatever I get when I add them, 
I can replace one of those two equations with that answer. Now you have to see this played out, okay? So let's, let's just stop right there. Those rules are all we really need at this point to do elimination. So I look at my system of equations, right? And I start thinking to myself, okay, I'm gonna see if there's some way that I can make the X's go away, all right? So I'm focusing all of my attention right now on the X's. I could have looked at the Y's, but let me look at the X's first. When I look at the X here and the X here, if I add these two equations together, right? I would do X plus X and X plus X would be two X, right? And the X would not go away. It would still be there. I'd have two of them. So that doesn't really help. What about the Y's? I have a positive Y and a negative Y. If I add those two together, won't the Y go away? Right, Y add a negative Y, it goes away. Ah, that's good. Because rule two says I can add any two equations together, then replace one of them with the answer. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm going to take these two equations and add them together. What would happen if I add these down? So the X plus the X would be two X, right? The plus Y and the minus Y would be zero. And then the 10 plus the 10 would be 20. Now that equation is now just two X equals 20, isn't it? Which we know is just X equals 10. So rule two says I can add any two equations together. I just did that right here, right? I did this and I got the answer X equals 10. I can take this answer and replace either one of these equations with it, either one. So I have a new system of equations now. It looks like this, X plus Y equals 10. I'm leaving the first equation alone, but I am replacing the second equation with this answer. Do y'all see that I'm using this right here? I added, the two I added the two equations together. And then whatever I got for my answer, I decided to replace my second equation with that answer. So now look at what, you're, look at what the system looks like. It's saying, hey, X plus Y is 10, okay? Everyone, X plus Y is 10, but hey, X is, uh, X, X is 10, right? X plus Y equals 10, but I'm telling you that X must be 10. So if you know that X is 10, then what you can do is just take this equation, replace X with 10, and now subtract 10 on both sides and you get Y is zero. And isn't that the same exact answer we had before? Yeah. Okay, so if this confused you a little bit, don't worry about it. Don't worry, we're gonna do two more examples and then we're gonna do word problems. So let's try the second one we did. No questions? This was the second one we did, right? All right, so let me get rid of that highlight there. Okay, trying to solve this. So again, I'm not doing substitution, I'm doing elimination. So I'm gonna start by looking at the X's. If I add those X's together right now, I'd get seven X and they wouldn't go away, would they? If I add the Y's together, negative four Y and positive Y, that's gonna give me negative three Y and they don't go away, right? So neither one of them go away if I add them together right now. Go with me? However. However, in those rules, in the rules we had here, right? I am allowed to multiply any equation by any non-zero number. So do y'all see that if we look at the y's, this was a negative four y, what would it be really nice to have had right here to make the y's go away? What would we really like to have had here? Four y. 4y, right? Wouldn't it be nice to have a 4y there? 
Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the second equation by four. So I'm going to put a four out here with a circle around it to let you know I'm about to distribute a four through this equation. I'm allowed to do that because of the first rule of elimination. Once I do that, I will have a new system of equations. 2x minus 4y equals 9. And then 20x plus 4y equals uh, 52. Don't forget, the 4 must go through everything. OK? Everything gets hit with the 4. Do you all see now that I have a negative 4y and a positive 4y? So if I add down, right, the y's are going to go away. So let's add down now. We're going to get 22x plus nothing equals 61. And this just means that 22x is 61 which means x is 61 over 22. Does that look familiar? We did that earlier, right? That's what we got. So now I have this new system. I'm gonna do this to the right. My new system looks like this. 2x minus 4y equals nine. And then I already know that x is equal to 61 over 22. And since I know that x is 61 over 22, I can take my first equation replace the x with 61 over 22 and solve for y. Now, I'm not going to go through this, OK? Because we already did this. If you solve for y now, you should get was this the problem? Yeah. You should get negative 19 over 22. Do you want me to do it or no? It's up to you. Do, I want to, do you want me to go through this, solve it or not? Yes? Yes? OK, I'm seeing yes. OK, to solve this, I would do, I'd multiply across here 61 times 2 with that. What's that? 122. 122 over 22 minus 4y equals 9. I'm going to try and get the y by itself. So I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract 122 over 22 from both sides. I have to get a common denominator over here. Negative 4y equals, let's see, I have to multiply top and bottom of this by 22. So just to be sure, 9 times 22. I get 198 over 22 minus 122 over 22. So negative 4y equals 76 over 22. And my last step is to divide both sides by negative 4. Um, dividing by negative four is the same as multiplying by negative one fourth. I think it might be easier to see it this way because these cancel out to give you the Y. And then over here you have negative 76 over 88. Is that what we had? It doesn't look familiar. Whoa. Uh, it reduces. That's what it is. Uh, 76 divided by four is 19, so you get negative 19 over 22. So it's the same number, just not reduced out. Questions? So my advice to you is this. Don't, don't marry one of these methods, okay? Don't, don't get married to elimination. Don't get married to substitution. Be open to using both. Because in different places in your mathematical future, you're going to have people that solve things with substitution with elimination. You don't want to just have one way, all right? So be open to both. I prefer elimination, but 
um, I'm willing to do substitution if I need to. Let's do the last one, this one here. This one's kind of an interesting one. So on this system, I'm gonna look at the X's first. And I'm noticing that on the X's, if I add down, those don't go away, right? And same with the Y's, if I add down, oh, they almost go away, negative four Y and three Y, that's negative, negative Y, that, that's, we want it to go completely away to nothing. So how can I get things to go away? This is weird. I need the X's to add up to be zero or the Y's to add up to be zero. It's, it's up to us which one we wanna make go away. Hmm. What can I do to make, let's just focus on the X's. Let's try and make the X's go away. What could I do? Can you multiply the X's by um, like, a, like if you were to multiply three X by five X and then multiply five X by three X to get like 15 X on both? Exactly. So what we'll do is we'll multiply the top equation by five. That will create a 15 X, right? And then we're going to multiply the bottom equation by not three, but negative three. And that will create a negative 15 X. So when I distribute through here, here, and here, this should get the X's to go away. Let's just rewrite the system. 15 X minus 20 Y equals 50, right? The five goes through to everything. And then the negative three goes through. Negative three times each of these, right? That's my new system. Add down. The X's go away. I get negative 29Y equals 86. And if I divide both sides by 29, I get negative 86 over 29 is what Y is. And so my new system is the 15X minus 20Y equals 50, but I also know that Y is equal to negative 86 over 29. I'm going to write something down. Y'all tell me if this is if this is correct still. Can I do this? Am I allowed to, to make that next step? Can I go from here to here? What did I do? Can you tell what I did? You reduced it, right? Yeah, I went back and remember we had multiplied by five to get it to this. All I did from here to here is I decided to divide by five on the first equation. Now, the reason I did that is to make my numbers smaller. You don't have to do this, but you can always go back to one of your original equations. So that's what I did. Now I'm going to take this 3x minus 4y equals 10. I'm going to replace the y with negative 86 over 29 equals 10. And then you can solve for x. I'm not going to go through this one. But we should get the same answer we got before, which was x was this right here, negative 0.621. So you can see that th these methods are different, right? Like it's a different tactic that you're using, but they get you the same result either way. All right. I gave a test yesterday in my other college algebra class. So y'all know that there's a college algebra 
right? For people who are going on and doing more math, that's this class. And then there's a class college algebra for people who are not going on to do more math, right? Two different ones. In my class that they're not going on, I gave this test yesterday and I asked them this problem. So I'm gonna see if y'all can figure this out. I'm gonna give you a minute to think about it. What I want you to see if you, what I wanna see if you can do is just without me ever working through a word problem at all with you, I wanna see if there's any way that you can read that question and turn it into a system of equations. This is a system of equations problem. Let's see if you can interpret the wording and come up with it on your own, all right? I'll give you five minutes to see if you can't figure something out, okay? I just put a little hint up there to get you started. Okay, let's see if anyone got this going here. So what is, what is one equation that we could write down? Does that Would it be like um, x plus y equals 14? Yeah, so x plus y should be 14 because if x is how many dimes I have and y is how many quarters I have, and I tell you that I've got 14 coins in my pocket, then the total number of those added up together should be 14. Good, so that's one equation. Now, <clears throat> the next equation is usually a little harder for people to get. So does someone have the other one? Was that, do you have the other one? Um, it's, it's like decimals. So is it like okay. point, point 0.10x plus point 0.25y equals the 260? 
equals 2.60. Okay, so <clears throat> that is correct. Let's understand why. Each dime you have, right? Each dime that you have is worth 10 cents. So what Lizette is saying is, okay, I'm gonna put the value of the dime right here, 0 0.10, that's how much it's worth. And X is how many of I, I have. So if I have none of these, I'll have, I have no money from this. If I have one of these, it'll be 10 cents. Two would be 20 cents. Three would be 30 cents. When you add that to the quarters, right, you have it times their value, then you should have $2.60. This is correct. Does anyone have any questions? Good. Now we need to solve this. So I'm going to use elimination, okay? I'm gonna use elimination, but the first thing I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna multiply this by 100. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna get rid of the decimals. So I wanna move the decimal point over two places so that all of these will be nice big numbers. I'm allowed to do that, right? Because there's a rule that says I can multiply any equation by any number as long as it's not zero. So I'm gonna multiply by 100. That will create a new system, x plus y equals 14, and then 10x plus 25y equals 260. All right, that's a new system, but no more decimals. I'm happy to see that. Let's make the x's go away. So what could I multiply by to make the x's kill each other off? You can multiply the first equation by negative 10. First equation, negative 10, good. Negative 10 here, goes here, here, and here. So we're gonna get a new system, negative 10x minus 10y equals negative 140. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then 10x plus 25y equals 260. Now we add down and the X's go away. I get 15 Y's because I have negative 10 Y and 25 Y. And when I add those together, I get um, 120. Now divide both sides by 15. So how many times does that go in there? It's eight, right? Eight times. So why is eight? So now I have to rewrite this system. Now, when I rewrite the system, I'm going to write the first equation. See there our first equation, negative 10x minus 10y. I'm actually going to take that equation back to its first form way up here. And I'm going to put that in here. And then I'll put my y equals eight. Remember, you can always take this equation back to where it started. Here, I just have to basically divide everything by negative 10 to get it back to this. Now I take my first equation, x plus y is 14. Replace the y with eight. And you get x is equal to six. So I have six dimes, I have eight quarters. Eight quarters would be $2. Six dimes would be 60 cents, $2 and 60 cents. And I have 14 coins in my pocket. We good? Let's do one more type of problem, okay? One more type of problem. And, um, and then I'm gonna give you a homework assignment, all right? All right, so let me, uh, you know what? I think I can go and show you the review. Here we go, um, where is it? Here's the review. Good. 
There we go. You need to mix a 5% saline. Saline is just salt water. Saline mixture with a 30% saline mixture to get 12 gallons of a 10% saline mixture. How much of each type do you need? Okay, so let me try and explain what this problem is, is doing. This is, this is actually something you would use in like a chemistry lab, but usually they're, we're talking about acid solutions, not saline. I just use saline for this example. So the, the idea is this, we've got this, this big pot, right? This container and what it has in it is 5% salt water. Five percent salt water means that, however, however much is in there, ninety-five percent of it is water and five percent of it is salt. Okay, so you have five percent salt and ninety-five percent pure water. What I need to do is I need to mix it together. I need to add that together with another container that has thirty percent salt water. which means it's saltier, right? There's more salt in here than there is in here. And when I add those two together, I need to have a container that has 10% salt in it, okay? And exactly 12 gallons of it. So the question is, how many of each do I mix? See, it's like these two containers over here I'm going to mix them together and I'm going to mix, you know, some it's, do I do equal amounts to get 10% or do I do more of the 5% or more of the 30%, right? I'm going to mix it up at the end of the day. I need 12 gallons of 10%. So what we don't know is how much of this X gallons. We don't know how many to do and Y gallons of this. Together, it's got to equal the 12 gallons of the 10%. So does anyone have a first equation for me? X plus Y equals 12. Okay, X plus Y equals 12. That is correct because X is the number of gallons of this one I'm going to pour in. Y is the number of gallons of the 30% I'm gonna pour in, right? And at the end, I need 12 gallons. Good, that, that first equation, most people can get that one. The second one is exactly like the coins, okay? Exactly like the coins in the sense that the 5% means that we have 0.05 a concentration of 0 0.05 in terms of salt for every gallon we pour in. Here we have 0 0.30 as a concentration of salt for every Y gallon we plug in. So it should look like this, 0 0.05X plus 0 0.30Y. But here's the part I think that tricks people is what does it need to be equal to? Because in the previous problem it was $2.60, right? But here, what is it? Is it, is it 12 or is it 10? Is it 0.10? What is it? Well, how much salt's in this container at the end? How much salt? 10% of 12, right? What's 10% of 12? What is 10% of 12? Well, that means 0 0.10 times 12. What's 0 0.10 times 12? 1.2. See, if I have 12 gallons over here, 10% of it is salt, then that means 1.2 gallons of it is salt. So this should be 1.2. Questions on that part? That's the part I think people 
kind of miss is this over here. They either put a 12 here, they put a 10 here, they put a 0.1 here. They don't multiply these two together. And you have to convert that to a decimal, 0 0.10. Now what I'm doing, multiply by 100 down here, that'll clear my decimals out. 5x plus 30y equals 120. All I did was move the decimal point two places for each one of these. Let's kill the x's. You could kill the y's if you want. I'm going to kill the x's. I'm going to multiply top equation by negative 5. New equation, negative 5x minus 5y equals negative 60. And then 5x plus 30y equals 120. Add straight down, we get, um, what do we get? 25y equals 60. And let's just get this as a decimal. Divide both sides by 25. 2.4. Now I'm going to write a new system over here. I know the bottom equation is y equals 2.4. The top equation can be any equation um, I want here. I'm gonna do the x plus y is 12. And then I'll take that answer or that equation, x plus y is 12 and replace the y with 12 point, or 2.4. So subtract and you should get 9.6. So we should do 9.6 gallons of the 5% mixture and 2.4 gallons of the 30% mixture. So if I pour in 9.6 gallons of the 5% salt water with 2.4 gallons of the 30% and stir it up, I'm gonna have 12 gallons of what, 10%, is that what it was? 10%, I have 12 gallons of 10% salt water. Okay, I have to show you, I'm sorry, I told you that would be it. I have to show you two more quick, quick examples. Okay, quick examples. And what I want you to do is think back to what solving a system of equations means geometrically. It's the intersection of two lines, right? It's the intersection of two lines. That's the, the point of intersection is the solution. So I would like you to consider these two examples and I'm gonna put them side by side. First example is this one, um, X minus three Y equals 12 and then negative two X plus six Y equals nine. Let's solve that system. Y'all wanna get rid of the X's? Yeah, multiply the top equation by what? I'm trying to kill the X's off. Two, thank you, Miguel. Two, so distribute that two through. Your new system will be 2x minus 6y equals, what, 24? And then this one will be negative 2x plus 6y equals 9. Add down, the x's go away, plus how many y's do we have? Uh-oh, they're gone as well, aren't they? Equals, what's the right side? 
33. Zero equals 33. Does zero equal 33? No. What the hell's happening here? What's going on? So we got some, some nonsense at the end here. What do you think this means visually? Does it not have an intersection at all? Okay, they don't intersect, which means these lines are parallel. Good, Lisa. They're parallel. These are parallel lines. Now, if you don't believe that, let me type them in. X minus 3Y equals 12. And the other one was negative 2X plus 6Y equals 9. And let me get rid of this one. These were our two lines. They don't have an intersection because they're parallel lines, right? So what do we, what do, we do? What, what's the takeaway from this? There's no solution, okay? That's the answer to this. There's no solution. And the reason we know there's no solution is because this is wrong, right? Zero does not equal 33. So there's no solution. Geometrically, it means they're parallel lines. Just be careful, that may happen, that you get no solution. Now compare that to this. Almost the same problem almost the exact same problem. The only thing I changed was instead of a nine, I put negative 24. So in this problem, well, let's still try and kill the X's. So I'm gonna multiply by two on the top, which we just did in the previous problem, the same thing. So we should get two X uh, minus six Y equals 24. And then on the bottom, negative 2x plus 6y equals negative 24. And when you add down this time, what do you get? Left side is 0. Right side is also 0. And 0 does equal 0. So what do you think is happening here geometrically? I change that. All I did was change that nine. So what do you, Diego, what do you, what do you got? What do you think? They're the same line. They're the same line. So if I type in negative 24 here, look, it's the same line, which means that every point on this line is a solution. There's two lines, it's, they're right on top of one another. They hit everywhere, right? So there's an infinite number of solutions here. infinite solutions. Basically all the points on the line. Okay, so those are the three scenarios we have. Okay as a conclusion of, of today's stuff for systems, when we have two equations with two variables, okay, when we have that, there are three possible outcomes. First, we have one solution. And that would be when it looks like two lines that hit each other, right? And they intersect at a single point. We could have no solution. And that would mean that the two lines are parallel. And we could have infinite solutions
And that's where it's the same line. I'm just gonna kind of draw it like on top of itself, same line. For systems of two equations with two variables in them, those are the only three outcomes that you can have. Now, I gave you some problems that I've already tested my other college algebra class on. You might be saying, hey, well, why, you know, why are they doing that already and we're, we're only doing this now? Well, that's where they stop. We are going to now convert and go three equations with three unknowns. They don't do that, okay? Three equations, three unknowns. And we'll save that for next class um, because I have to start from scratch and kind of like talk about geometrically, what is three equations? What is three unknowns? So I'm gonna get your homework um, together. Let's do this. I'll dismiss the class at this point. Um, check your email um, later on. I'm gonna do it right now. I will send you an email of the problems I want you to do over systems of equations, all right? All right, everyone, it's what, Wednesday? So I will see you next week. Y'all have a great weekend. That's it, y'all have a good one. Thank you, sir, have a good one.